Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, the last video in the Milvis Cessna 310 tutorial. Now we've talked the Milvis Cessna 310 quite a bit, we've talked IFR ops, we've talked flying, cross country flight planning and all that. One last video. Now we're not going to be in the Milvis Cessna 310 today though. We're going to be in that Cessna 310. This is the Freeware FSND Cessna 310. Um, this is a Freeware aircraft. I will link it down in the description below. I wanted to go over this aircraft because it's a really nice Freeware airplane that is a, is a good alternative for those of you who really don't want or are not able to spend the money on the Milvis Cessna 310. So let's, uh, let's go over some of the differences in this airplane. Now, the first notable difference is this is a Cessna 310Q, as opposed to the Milvis is a Cessna 310R. So there are differences. I believe this is a newer version of the 310. Um, as far as actual flight characteristics, really ain't too many differences. You can use the same performance data to plan flights for them. Weight and balance is basically the same. I think this plane can carry a slightly bigger payload. Um, overall airframe is the same, props and all that are the same, flaps are the same. Now the cockpit, not the same. So you may notice right off the bat there are differences between this one and the Milvis Cessna 310 cockpit. Um, actually there are differences between this cockpit and the way this airplane comes. I have added the Milvis Cessna 310 gauges to this cockpit. Most of these gauges are from the Milvis Cessna 310. Uh, the reason for that is because... This plane's gauge, it makes use of default gauges, mostly it comes with a few of its own, but mostly it's default gauges, and yeah, they, they get, I did want to change it out for the, the easier to read, nicer versions. Alright, so, differences in operation. This one has a Navomatic autopilot, very, very different from the, um, the Cap 140 autopilot in the 310R. Uh, as far as overall switch placement, they're all around here. Uh, let's see. Some of these aren't really highlighted. There's battery, the two gen switches. Magnetos right where they are in the 310Q or the 310R from Milvis. There's the start switches. There's the aux pumps. Now, you may notice there's no primer switch. No primer switch in this plane. The lights are all right there as opposed to on the side panel over here. Emergency fuel cutoff there. Um, GPS. It does not come with a GPS. It comes with the default GPS pop-up. It doesn't come with one built into the uh, the uh, panel. It comes with the default avionics Bendex King gauges into the panel. But I've changed them out for a, uh, a GNS 53430 and a GTX 330, which I, I prefer over the, uh, the default Bendex King stuff. Flop over to the right seat real quick. You may notice. Cow flaps are right here. Now, these are actually, in real life, these would be the alternate air um, selection switches. The actual cow flaps would be down here. They chose to put them there for some reason. I don't really know why. P2 heat right here and DI switches right there. Um, but just like with the, the 310Q, you have flaps 15 and flaps 35 positions. Beacon, landing, taxi, nav, and strobe lights, panel lights. Um, I'm going to flip over to the outside view. Uh, the, the landing lights on this plane are a single position switch. So just control L or flipping the switch in there will both extend the lights and turn them on. Battery's not on right now, so they're not flipping on. But yeah, it's one switch to, ex it's one button push, unlike the Milvis 310. To just extend those lights and flip them on. That's actually nicer, and I do prefer that over the uh, the Milvis Cessna 310 one. Even though it's more realistic with the three position switch, I, I do prefer that just one click and it's on. It's a convenience option. Not realistic, but it's more convenient that way. Alrighty, so put the. Uh, also, one other thing for the outside view. The cow flaps are not internal like they are on the Milvis Cessna 310. So those cow flaps are external and will affect the aircraft's aerodynamics. Not noticeably, but they, they do affect, they, they give you more drag and whatnot. So uh, let's, um, 
get this plane started up and ready to go. I'm going to shut the cockpit door real quick. No uh, door seal inflation to worry about. All right. Can't get rid of the controller here. So mags are all on. I'm going to flip master battery, generators on. I'm going to bring, just like starting a default aircraft, fuel mixture needs to be all the way up. Hit the starter button. Okay, a lot easier than starting the uh, Milvis tree tune. Bring them out halfway. Engines are stable. Avionics on, and we'll flip the uh, GPS units on since they're separate. There we go. Alrighty, uh, we're not really going to be flying anywhere in particular today. We're just going to take her up for a flight. Alright, we set that to altitude mode where I want it. So let's go over the avionics. Just like in the, the 310 from Milviz, we got the airspeed, attitude, altitude. Uh, turn coordinator. We got a s clock with no sweeping. Oh, this one actually does have a sweeping second hand, so I guess you could use it for instrument approaches, but I still prefer the uh, the GTX 330 to be the stopwatch. Now, this plane does come with an ADF by default when you download it. I swapped the ADF out for a Hobbs gauge because I don't ever really use ADF, and when I put these GPSs in there, I lost the ADF selection anyway. So, I'll use that. We got DME separate from the GPS readout. Uh, HSI, unlike with the Milviz um, HSI, this can only pull from one source, and that is Nav1 or GPS. Uh, we got a second CDI down here, which is nice. No RMI that I can see, though, unfortunately. GPS 530, this is a freeware GNS 530 and G freeware GNS. 430, as well as a, three, a freeware Bendix King KA-130 auto select, audio selector. I think that's a KA-130. What is this one? Oh, KA-130 TRC audio selection panel. A pretty simple one. Those are freeware. This is the Milviz 310 from... Yeah, this is the Milviz uh, 330, though. So, RPM and manifold pressure gauges right below it. You know how to work them. Now here we have an EGT gauge, right here. Up here we have um, the, 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 the oil pressure. is Yeah, oil pressure is right here. Uh, fuel pressure, I think. And something. Cylinder head temperature, I believe. I don't know. Not sure what the top bit of that gauge is. Uh... Carburetor air temperature, though this is a fuel-injected engine. Cylinder head temperature there. You also have um, fuel remaining and fuel flow indications right here. And the primary flight instruments repeated on that side. Um, as far as flying it, it's just like flying a default multi-engine airplane. So not the most realistic in terms of operations, but... It does get the job done. And sounds fantastic. Alrighty. Let's call ground for taxi and we're just gonna fly straight out. Ground, Cessna, November 345 Bravo Plank. Request taxi for takeoff, departing straight out. Cessna, November 345 Bravo Plank. Taxi to an old short of runway 2, beginning taxiway echo Bravo Charlie. Contact tower on one two four point five five four three. Taxi two and hold short runway two using taxiway echo Bravo Charlie. Set that by Bravo Mike. Great. Echo Bravo Charlie. We are on the ground at Eastman Regional. Uh, I think that's the name of this airport. Heart of Georgia Regional in Eastman, Georgia. I really like this airport. The airport guys. This is payware scenery for this airport the, by the airport guys. Really nice scenery here. One of my favorite little airports to operate in. Alrighty, so... Taxiing? Yeah, it's no different than a default airplane. I, mean, I 
this is not really a tutorial. I just want this is mostly a video to let you know that this this aircraft does exist. And if you don't want to, if you don't want or don't have the money for the payware Milviz Cessna 310, there is a freeware option out there. Really, really nice one too. Middle Georgia Aviation College campus right there in that um that Boeing. 717 that they had from Airtran that was donated to them right over there. Alrighty. As far as flying the airplane, landing and strobe lights are on, so you can see the landing lights flip on when you flip them out. As far as flying the airplane, uh, with a with the exception of making adjustments for the fact that this is a essentially a default aircraft, you can fly this airplane pretty much exactly the same you fly the Milvis Cessna 310. All the operation speeds are the same and everything. Uh, just be aware that its operation procedures are slightly different because you have to adjust for the fact that it is essentially a default plane. Its autopilot is very different. We will get into that once we get airborne. All right, we'll flip over the tower. Tower, Cessna, November 345, Bravo, Mike, runway 2, ready for takeoff, straight out departure. Cessna, November 345, Bravo, Mike, cleared for takeoff, runway 2, departing straight out, approved. Clear for takeoff, runway 2, Cessna, I, Bravo, Mike. All righty. I really love the way this plane sounds. You're about to hear how, the, how just how good these engine sounds are on this plane. All right, lined up, full throttle. Listen to that. That's one of the best sounds sound effects I've ever heard. For a freeware airplane, anyway. All right, there's 90 knots. Rotate. So right here up. Fish up and maintain about 130 knots. Alright, we're gonna throttle back 25 on the manifold pressure and 25 on the RPM. Engines aren't quite as powerful on this plane as they are on the Milvis 310. It doesn't seem the, the props don't don't redline on takeoff like they do on the Milvis. All right, we'll maintain 130 knots. And we'll we'll turn towards the north. All right, so. I mentioned that the autopilot in this plane different is different, and this is the main Seven difference. And that is the main difference between this plane and the Milviz is how different the autopilot is. All right, I've got us trimmed. The autopilot is a Navomatic autopilot. Now, the developer of this aircraft was kind enough to include the default Bendex King Cap 140 autopilot in um in a pop-up with shift 2 with the uh, radio stack here you're probably going to need to use that quite a bit when you're first learning to fly this because the navomatic is really really finicky so the way the navomatic autopilot works is it, it, it's only got three controls autopilot master nav hold and heading hold there is no altitude hold adjustment for this um, airplane. There kind of is, though. So, the way the autopilot works is I'm going to get us up to 3,000... I'm going to level us off at 3,500. The way you have the autopilot hold, hold an altitude is thus. The autopilot doesn't hold an altitude. It holds a climb rate. When you engage the autopilot switch, the master autopilot switch, 
it will maintain whatever vertical speed. The trim is really sensitive on this plane. It will maintain whatever vertical speed you had set when you pushed that autopilot button. So let me throttle back to 20 inches on the manifold pressure. And I will pitch and trim for level flight, zero vertical speed. Once I see zero, I push the autopilot button. The autopilot is now holding vertical speed zero. And can't, it's not really moving the trim wheel too much because I already had it pretty much trimmed for level flight. Now, if I want to follow the heading indicator, I have to push the heading hold switch there. Which is third from the down. That auto syncs the heading bug to your current heading. And then you can move it, and it will fly on heading hold now. Nav hold, pretty obvious what that does. So there's no approach hold, there's no altitude hold with this autopilot. That's if you do choose to use the, the built-in Navomatic autopilot, which is the more realistic option, because uh, that's what the 310Q came with standard, although modern ones probably do have the Cap 140. Now, you, again, you do have the option of using the default CAP 140 available. It's fully functional. But uh, if you want to be more realistic, the Navomatic is how you do it. Now, how you make altitude changes is you disengage the autopilot completely. And let's say we want to start a descent. Throttle back. Prop back. pitch down for descent. I'll put us in about a 500 foot per minute descent. That sounds good. Once we pitch and trim for the descent rate we want, autopilot on, and now it's going to hold a 500 foot per minute descent. Climb would be about the same way. So to use the autopilot on this aircraft, you set the vertical speed you want, then you engage the autopilot because the autopilot will hold a vertical speed, not an altitude. And it does have heading and nav hold modes. So that is the freeware Milviz, or not freeware Milviz, but a freeware Cessna 310 that is available for download from FSND. Very, very nice airplane. Anyway, that was the last video in the Cessna 310 tutorial series. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, and we will see you next time.